Hello and welcome to the Radio and Electronics School. I'm Ron, VK2DQ, and in this tutorial we're going to be discussing the phase locked loop. There was a time not all that long ago when multi channel radio systems weren't very common at all. They weren't common because there was not a great need for them. But if there were multi-channel radio systems and you required stability, uh, accurate frequency control of those radios, then the only way to do it was with uh, crystals. Uh, analog oscillators with LC circuits aren't very stable. Analog oscillators like the um, Hartley and Colpitts and Clap give you a wide, wide uh, diversity of frequency coverage, but they don't give you stability. So if you want frequency stability, the, the only way to obtain that was to use uh, quartz resonators or quartz crystals. One of the first multi-channel systems was uh, citizens band radio. And to, a, to achieve the multiple channels, quartz crystals were used in a master-slave arrangement. Uh, for example, on screen we've got a 24 channel system. The 24 channel system has three master crystals and six slave crystals. Now we can mix one master against each slave to get six channels. So using one master and mixing that with uh, six, six slaves we can get six different channels or six different frequencies. Then we, we turn that master off, turn the next one on, and do it all over again and get another six frequencies. And again, C and D, masters C and D, will all give us six frequencies. So one master at a time against six slaves will give us a total channel capacity of 24 channels. And that works well. There's not too many radio systems uh, that required 24 channels, or in the past there wasn't anyway. But imagine if you wanted a uh, 400 or 500 or a 1000 channel system. Well, the cost of quartz crystals isn't insignificant, uh, and you'd, you'd need a huge number of quartz crystals uh, to get, uh, get such a large multi channel system. That's where phase lock loop comes in. Phase lock loop gives us the ability to have. A, a very large multiple channel system which still has the stability of a, a crystal oscillator. Before we discuss phase lock loop we need to revise or, or go over a couple of principles uh, building blocks of a phase lock loop system and, and one of those is the voltage controlled oscillator. Now these days, voltage controlled oscillators, we don't build them, they, they come in integrated circuit packages. Uh, but the principle is, is important to, to understand if you want a, a clear understanding of, of how they work. On the screen I've shown a, uh, a crystal which is part of an oscillator. And this crystal is in series with a bracted diode. Now this, this circuit here would be a, an oscillator circuit, it could be a um, a cold pitch crystal oscillator and all we've done is is put a Bracter diode in series. Now Bracter diode will vary its capacitance depending upon the amount of reverse bias voltage and if its capacitance changes then that will be the same as having a trimmer capacitor in series with the crystal so as we adjust the reverse bias voltage on the Bracter diode we'll be adjusting the frequency of the crystal. This circuit here is just a, uh, a simple uh, DC voltage regulator. We've got a current limiting resistor in, in series with a reversed bias xenodiode and a little bit of filtering and a potentiometer and that allows us to adjust the reverse bias voltage on the reactor diode which in turn uh, determines the exact frequency that the crystal is going to uh, resonate on. Now that's that's the basic principle of a voltage control oscillator. Um, 
lots of radio systems these days used for actor die out tuning like this. Uh, usually the uh, voltage comes from an intelligent circuit, not a, uh, a simple DC regulator circuit like this. It comes from an intelligent circuit, could even be uh, microprocessor controlled voltage on the uh, reactor diodes in a modern transceiver. Um, the voltage control oscillator is not as stable as a, a straight crystal controlled oscillator because once you start adding reactor diodes and things like that uh, you lose uh, some of the stability that a pure quartz crystal oscillator would have. So we don't consider voltage variable oscillators or voltage controlled oscillators to be very stable. We don't have to make voltage controlled oscillators today. We don't have to make anything really to build anything out of discrete components for a phase lock loop. There is integrated circuits, uh, off the shelf integrated circuits which have entire PLL systems in them uh, and voltage controlled oscillators are part of that, uh, those PLL systems. Uh, the next thing we need to look at is uh, a stage in the phase lock loop called a phase detector H and, and go over just exactly what a phase detector does. Again, we, there are analog circuits that, that we can use to build a phase detector, but these days they're nearly always, they are always implemented as uh, digital circuits and they're, they're, they're off the shelf integrated circuits. Uh, so you can just get a phase detector or you can get a phase detector as, as part of a phase lock loop system. Now the way the phase detector works, it, it compares two signals and if those signals are in phase then it produces a, a certain voltage output. It could be zero volts or it could be a known voltage output if the two signals are in phase. Uh, for example, let's, let's, I'm not known for my sine waves. Actually, I am known for my bad sine waves. Let's say this is a signal from a very stable uh, crystal oscillator. And this is a signal from a VCO, a variable uh, voltage controlled oscillator. If the, uh, if the, so this is a VCO, so that's an unstable frequency really, and this is a stable frequency from a crystal oscillator. So imagine those uh, uh, two signals are exactly in phase, then there is a known voltage out here, it could be zero volts or it could be some other known voltage, uh, is applied back to the VCO to adjust the VCO's frequency. But if they're exactly in phase, there's no adjustment required. But let's say the VCO was a little higher in frequency uh, than the, uh, the crystal. I'll put a crystal here just to show this is a, uh, this is a, uh, a solid, accurate, stable uh, signal source and the VCO is, is not quite as stable. Uh, so if, if the VCO is, is lower in frequency than the, than the crystal signal, then the phase detector produces a voltage on its output, and that voltage can be applied back to the VCO to adjust the VCO's frequency towards that of the, the crystal frequency. So if the VCO is low, then the phase detector will produce a voltage at its output and that voltage can be applied to the VCO to adjust the VCO's frequency upwards. And then eventually uh, the VCO will be on exactly the same phase as that of the uh, crystal oscillator. That's how a phase detector, that's what a phase detector does. They don't normally produce a DC output voltage, they normally produce a, uh, a pulse train. Uh, and the mark space ratio could uh, vary and that pulse train is, is filtered with a simple uh, low pass filter and after that then we get a variable uh, DC output voltage. So that's a phase detector and how it works and, and we've nearly got everything we need 
the voltage controlled oscillator and the phase detector that's almost not quite almost everything we need to start making a phase lock loop system now what we've got on screen is really exactly what we had before we've just drawn it a whole lot neater we've got our phase detector and going into the phase detector is the output signal from the VCO and also into the phase detector we've got a very stable uh, crystal oscillator feeding into, into it as well. The crystal oscillator in this case is on 10 megahertz and the VCO is on about 10 megahertz somewhere, could be anywhere. So the VCO signal goes into the phase detector, the oscillator very stable oscillator frequency goes into the phase detector and if the VCO is not on the same frequency as the crystal oscillator the phase detector will produce a correction voltage and that correction voltage is fed back to the VCO to bring the VCO to the same frequency as the crystal oscillator So if the VCO is not exactly on 10 megahertz, it could be above or below 10 megahertz, it is only then that the phase detector will produce a correction voltage that will adjust the VCO. So if the VCO is on 9 megahertz, crystal oscillator is on 10 megahertz, the phase detector produces a voltage which says the VCO is too low in frequency, the VCO needs to come up in frequency. That voltage is applied back to the VCO and the VCO starts to move upwards in frequency. Eventually the VCO will be on 10 MHz or it might even overshoot 10 MHz. In which case, if it overshoots 10 MHz, the phase detector will produce a voltage which says the VCO is too high. And that voltage applied back to the VCO will bring the VCO downwards in frequency. And eventually the VCO will, well actually when I say eventually it takes a few milliseconds or even less. The, the, what will happen is the VCO will be locked onto the same frequency as the crystal oscillator. Therefore we now have a VCO locked on 10 megahertz and as stable as this crystal oscillator is here. We call that phased lock, we call it phase lock. It's a phase lock loop and we've locked the VCO onto the crystal frequency. So with this block diagram, we, what we've achieved is phase lock. We've made the VCO as stable as the quartz crystal oscillator and on the same frequency as the quartz crystal oscillator. So apart from phase lock, what have we achieved? Well, not much, <laughs> because if we, if we wanted it, if we just wanted a 10 megahertz signal, we may as well have just made a 10 megahertz crystal oscillator. That would give us a very stable 10 megahertz signal. So, this on its own has is, is really not achieved very much at all, except it's made the VCO, the voltage controlled oscillator, as stable as the uh, crystal oscillator. But we're going to see how we, can, how we can modify things so that we could actually have the VCO on another frequency other than 10 megahertz and still be locked to the 10 megahertz crystal oscillator. We've added another uh, block to our diagram called a divider. What is a divider? A divider is uh, an electronic circuit which is in fact a counter. <clears throat> so if we have a uh, divide by 2 and that's the output and this is the input and we put a signal into the input, the divider counts the number of cycles on the input and for every two cycles on the input it produces one uh, one cycle on the output so the divider counts one two then out what counts again one two and then provides an output counts again one two and provides an output so 
For every count of two, there's one output. For every two cycles of input, there's one cycle of output. If it was a divide by three, it would count one, two, three, out. One, two, three, out. Divide by four, it would count one, two, three, four, and provide an output. One, two, three, four, and provide an output. So it's dividing the frequency by whatever the divide by number is. And in our diagram on the screen, we're using a divide by two. So whatever goes into the divider, whatever frequency goes into the divider is divided by two. You'll notice our VCO is on 20 megahertz. And that 20 megahertz is going into the divider. And so the output of the VCO is going of the from the divider is going to be 10 megahertz. So what we've done here is fool the phase detector into thinking the VCO is on 10 megahertz. The VCO is not on 10 megahertz, the VCO is on 20 megahertz. That 20 megahertz signal from the VCO goes into the divide by 2 and the output of that is 10 megahertz. So the the signal into the phase detector here is 10 megahertz. The signal into the phase detector is not really the VCO frequency. The VCO is on twice that frequency because we've sent the VCO through a divide by two circuit. So if the if the VCO the VCO is on 20, but if it was a little bit high, then the 10 megahertz signal here was high. If the 20 megahertz signal of the VCO was high, then the 10 megahertz signal uh, coming out of the divider would be slightly high. And then the phase detector would produce a voltage, a correction voltage, which would be fed back to the VCO to bring the frequency of the VCO down. And very, very quickly, you get phase lock. So what we have here is a VCO that is not on the same frequency as the reference crystal oscillator. The reference crystal oscillator is on 10 megahertz, but the VCO is actually on 20 megahertz, but the phase detector thinks the VCO is on 10 megahertz because we've got this divide by two circuit. So we can see that we can fool the phase detector into thinking the VCO is on the same frequency as the reference crystal when in fact it isn't. Now you might be able to see that if we changed the divide by number here, we could change the frequency of the VCO. Please understand that what we're achieving here is this VCO is going to be as stable as this 10 megahertz oscillator. 10 megahertz crystal os reference oscillator is very stable and that means that when we, when we have lock in this circuit, when we have phase lock, the output of the VCO is a very stable uh, signal as if it was a crystal oscillator. Now you may have worked out that if we change the uh, divider number here, let's say we put a uh, divide by 3, then the VCO would go to 30 megahertz because the VCO divided by 3 would then give us 10 megahertz. The phase detector, detector still thinks the VCO is on 10 megahertz and is producing a correction voltage for 10 megahertz, but in actual fact, if we went to divide by 3, the VCO would be on 30 megahertz. If we went to uh, divide by 4, the VCO would be on 40 megahertz. So we've now got a way, just by changing this divide by number here, of changing the VCO to many different frequencies. In this case, our channels uh, would be 10 megahertz apart. And you might be getting an idea how we could perhaps make the channels closer together. You notice our channel spacing here, divide by 2 gives us 20 megahertz, divide by 3 gives us 30 megahertz, divide by 4 gives us 40 megahertz. Our channel spacing is 10 megahertz. What is determining the channel spacing? 
uh, I think you might have guessed that it's the reference frequency crystal. That 10 megahertz there is determining the channel spacing of our VCO. This is not a practical VCO, a phase lock loop system, uh, but it's a, a good illustrative system of uh, phase lock loop. So by changing the divide by number, we can quickly change the VCO frequency. The VCO on that new frequency is brought into lock by the phase lock loop. So the VCO is as stable as the crystal oscillator and we've now got a means of producing multiple channels from one quartz crystal uh, and those channels uh, produced by the VCO are as stable as that quartz crystal. That's the basic principle of a phase lock loop system. Now what we have is a very practical phase lock loop system that could be used in a uh, modern uh, transceiver. This uh, transmitter or the transmit part of the uh, transceiver is going to transmit on 28.005 megahertz. All these frequencies are in megahertz unless uh, otherwise stated uh, kilohertz here for example. So this transmitter, just forget about the PLL for a moment. Normally this could just be an oscillator. We've got an oscillator on, um, oh, I need a pen. Imagine we've got an oscillator on uh, 35.8075 megahertz. And this is the last IF stage of the transmitter. Uh, so the, this has got the uh, signal on it. It's got the single sideband or FM or whatever it is. So the signal's been processed and manufactured. Uh, at this point and what we've got to do is convert the signal from 7.8 megahertz to 28 megahertz and to do that we could use an oscillator that oscillator could be on 35.8 megahertz so when we mix 35.8 megahertz with 7.8 megahertz the difference frequency is 28 megahertz that's f2 this is f1 when we mix those two signals together, we get the different signal. That's the one we want. There are other signals there, of course. Uh, but the, the mix that we want is F1 minus F2. And F1, F1, 35 megahertz, minus F2 is 28 megahertz. So that's our transmit frequency. And we could do that with a crystal oscillator here. However, if we did it with a crystal oscillator, we would have to use... Uh, another crystal to, to operate on another frequency and if we wanted another frequency we'd need another crystal or we could use a uh, VFO uh, uh, comprising of say a um, uh, clap uh, oscillator, an LC clap oscillator and that would do it for us but um, the problem would be that it, uh, it wouldn't be very stable in, in frequency because we're using uh, an LC circuit as a, as a, an oscillator. So obviously, then the, the way to, to do this to get different channels is to is to create this signal, this 35 megahertz signal or thereabouts, uh, with a phase lock loop system, and that's what this does. Let's let's have a closer look at it. Let's just have a bit of a browse over this block diagram and see if we can nut out what's going on. Our reference oscillator is on 10.24 megahertz. And remember that it's the frequency of the reference oscillator that determines our channel spacing. Well, channel spacing of 10.24 megahertz is a bit wide. So we go into a divide by 1024. And if we divide our reference oscillator by 1024, that is 10.24 megahertz divided by 1024, we get 10 kilohertz. So, in actual fact, our reference is 10 kilohertz, and that's going into the phase detector. Now, whatever else goes on here, we know that lock will only occur when 10 kilohertz is fed into the phase detector. So, when we've got 10 kilohertz coming from our reference oscillator, 
and 10 kilohertz coming from our divider, it is only then that we'll get phase lock. Our divider now is a programmable divider. It's got, uh, we can put uh, binary or binary coded decimal information onto the pins of the divider and that will tell the divider what to divide by. This programmable divider can divide by anything from 0 to 400. So just by putting uh, the right logic information onto the pins of the divider, we can adjust the divider to divide by anything between 1 and 400 or, or whatever. Okay, so there's our divider and at the moment it's set to divide by 195. Now, we've got another oscillator on 11.28 megahertz and that's an overtone oscillator because the, the output of this oscillator is 33.8 33.8575 megahertz. That's the third overtone of this overtone crystal oscillator. An overtone is an odd multiple of the series resonant frequency of the crystal. So the series resonant frequency of this crystal is 11.2858 megahertz, and this is the odd. This is an odd overtone of the series resonant frequency. So <clears throat> what we're doing, our VCO is running on thirty-five point eight zero seven five megahertz. I'll just say thirty-five megahertz. Okay, so our VCO is running on thirty-five megahertz. That thirty-five megahertz is going into a mixer. Going into that mixer also is the overtone oscillator on 33.8. That's going into the mixer as well. And the difference, that is F4 minus F3, see this is F4, that is F3. The difference frequency, F4 minus F3, in this case, is 1.95 megahertz. That 1.95 megahertz goes into the programmable divider, which is set to 195. And guess what? When you divide 1.95 megahertz by 195, you get 10 kilohertz. So the phase detector thinks the VCO is on 10 kilohertz. The VCO is not on 10 kilohertz. The VCO is on 35.8075 megahertz. That's 35.8075 megahertz is frequency changed by this mixer and oscillator. This mixer and oscillator never changes frequency. It's running on 33.8575 and whatever the VCO is, it will mix with the VCO to do it to get a difference frequency of F4 minus F3, which in this case is 1.95 megahertz. That 1.95 megahertz goes into the programmable divider, which is set to divide by 195, and the output is 10 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz is also coming from our reference oscillator here. Now, if the VCO was too high in frequency, then this 10 kilohertz would be too high in frequency. If VCO is too high in frequency, then this 10 kilohertz will be too high in frequency and the phase detector will say to the VCO, come down in frequency. The phase detector does that by applying a voltage, it produces a differential voltage on its output, which is fed back to the VCO and that voltage says to the VCO, you're too high, come down in frequency. Now there's a lot here, so we'll go over that again. We want our VCO to be operating on 35.8075 megahertz. And we'll just presume that it is currently operating on 35.8075 megahertz. That's the frequency we need to convert our IF to our transmit frequency. Now, we're modifying the VCO frequency. We're modifying it by feeding the output of the VCO into a mixer along with a crystal oscillator. This never changes frequency. This is a crystal oscillator. It never changes frequency. 
So we're feeding this 33.8575 MHz at all times into a mixer, but we're also feeding the output of the VCO into the same mixer. At the output of that mixer we get the difference frequency. In this case, 35.8075 and 33.8575, the difference frequency is 1.95 MHz. We're then going into a programmable divider which is set to divide by 195. When we divide 1.95 MHz by 195, we get 10 kHz. That along with the 10 kHz from the reference oscillator gives us phase lock. So there's no correction voltage going to the VCO. There's no need because we've got phase lock. Let's suppose that the VCO wandered upwards in frequency. If the VCO wandered upwards in frequency, then this 10 kHz would wander upwards in frequency. Because the phase detector thinks this is the VCO. So the phase detector says, you're not on 10 kHz. You need to come down in frequency. It sends a correction voltage to the VCO, which says to the VCO, come down in frequency and very quickly we get phase lock. So the, so the VCO is, is, is locked. It's the only frequency we can get phase lock on is this one at the moment, 35.8075 is the only frequency we can get lock on because that frequency after it's, after it's converted down by the mixer and divided by the divider, that's the only frequency that the VCO can be on to give us a 10 kilohertz signal into the phase detector. Of course our channel spacing now is, is 10 kilohertz because, and again we've filled the phase detector again, the, the, the reference oscillator is not on 10 kilohertz, the reference oscillator is on 10.4 megahertz, but we've got to divide by 1024 bringing the reference oscillator down to 10 kilohertz. Now what determines everything that goes on in this circuit is, is not the VCO or this mixer or, or anything else. What determines what goes on in this circuit is the programmable divider. And, and shortly I'll change the programmable divider and show you what happens when we change the programmable divider. But the best way to analyse this circuit is to, is to work backwards and say, OK, how, what's going on here? We've got a VCO and it's, it's locked. We'll presume it's locked. We've got a VCO and it's locked on 35.8075 MHz. That signal from the VCO goes into a mixer, this one. Also going into that mixer is a constant non-changing frequency from an overtone oscillator on 33.8575 MHz. That's going into there as well. So those two frequencies, those two signals mix and the mixer produces a difference frequency. In this case, the difference frequency is 1.95 MHz. That 1.95 MHz goes into the programmable divider, which is set to divide by 195. And when you divide 1.95 MHz by 195, you get 10 kHz. You're also getting 10 kilohertz into the phase detector from the reference oscillator. So we're 10 kilohertz in, and they're both exactly in phase. We have phase lock. We've got phase lock. The VCO is locked to 35.8075 megahertz. Should the VCO wander, should the VCO wander either upwards or downwards in frequency, should, as long as if it wanders at all then this 10 kilohertz signal will wander and then the phase detector will produce a correction voltage to bring the VCO back into lock on 10 kilohertz. The phase detector thinks the VCO is on 10 kilohertz, it's not. We really know it's on 35.8075. And that 35.8075 is being used in our transmitter in a mixer to convert our last IF 7.8 uh, and, the, and the difference between the, our last IF and the VCO output 
is our transmit frequency on 28.005 megahertz. So that's a pretty good look at a practical um, uh, PLL uh, diagram. Sometimes we actually have PLLs inside PLLs, phase lock loops inside PL in, inside phase lock loops. It's a, it's a wonderful circuit. It's used an awful lot in, in modern uh, transceivers today. There are other systems, but this system will be with us, uh, I suspect, uh, forever because it's so good. Now, it's a little bit hard to see sometimes what's doing all the controlling in a circuit like this. It's the programmable divider. We've been working backwards from the VCO and presuming it's in lock and then working backwards uh, back towards the phase detector. But it's actually the programmable divider that is controlling all the, all the uh, happenings in the circuit. At the moment, the programmable divider is set to uh, divide by 195 and the output frequency of the transmitter. The output of the VCO is here and the output frequency of the transmitter is on, on 28. And we're expecting a 10 kilohertz uh, channel spacing because the reference oscillator, the reference frequency is 10 kilohertz, the reference oscillator is 10.24, the reference frequency is 10 kilohertz. The phase detector thinks that's the frequency of the, of the crystal. So we're expecting a 10 kilohertz channel spacing. So at the moment we're on 28 0, 0.050 megahertz. Let's just put that in. Uh, clear. Um, 28.005 megahertz. Now let's let's go uh, down a channel. There we are. Just went down one channel, and we'll say minus. Uh, what are we on? 27.995 equals 0 0.01 megahertz. Hmm. Okay, if we multiply that by, um, if we multiply that by a thousand, we'll get kilohertz. 10 kilohertz. So our channel spacing is 10 kilohertz. And that's determined by the uh, the reference frequency. If the reference frequency was five kilohertz, then the channel spacing would be five kilohertz. If the reference frequency was one hertz, then the channel spacing would be one hertz. And I know you can think of applications for that. If the the encoding onto the programmable divider uh, can be done with um, mechanical switching, but better would be to do it with a microprocessor. And the microprocessor can also feed a uh, seven-segment display to tell us what frequency we're on, and the microprocessor can can tell the programmable divider uh, what divide by number to use depending on what frequency it's on. Uh, we could also say the microprocessor could uh, we could have a command to it that says, "Okay, uh, sweep." Divide by numbers, um, divide by 100 to divide by 150. And what we would actually have then would be a scanner. We would, we would be scanning those frequencies. And we could say to the microprocessor, if you detect a signal, stop. Uh, stop you changing the divide by number. Just stop, wait for five seconds, and if nothing happens, continue. So a phase lock loop system gives us terrific control and, and lots of features, memory channels, scanning between uh, two frequencies, all of those are made possible by combining a microprocessor and a phase lock loop system. Just to show you, I'll, I'll go up in frequency, I'm going up now in frequency, and you'll notice <coughs> that whenever the divide by number, whatever it changes to, this changes to, to that's 198, that's 1.98 megahertz, but it's the programmable divider which is controlling what goes on in this circuit. This is an Excel spreadsheet. If you would like uh, to play with this yourself and, uh, and revise this tutorial, if you'd like the spreadsheet sent to you, send me an email to ron at res.net.au and ask for the PLL Excel spreadsheet and I will email it.
it uh, to you. Well, that's it for this tutorial on phase lock loop. If you'd like to uh, to learn more, uh, this material was taken from the Radio Theory Handbook, Beginner to Advanced, and you can uh, get that on Amazon.com. Just go there and search for Radio Theory Handbook and you'll find it. If you have questions, you can email me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Cheerio for now. This is Ron, VK2DQ. Okay,